G'day everyone, it's Curtis here and welcome to an on the back wheel video. I've had the Dry Rider Adventure Vortex 2 for about a year now and given it a real hiding, so let's review it and see if it's worth buying. When I got my adventure bike, I didn't have any adventure bike gear. I mean, if I was riding a Starbucks to have a coffee to meet my BMW mates, I'd look the part, right? <laughs> But in all seriousness, it was just sheer coincidence that the Team Mono I bought my KLR from had this jacket for sale. I tried on a ton of jackets, but this one just happened to fit me the best and really suited the style of riding that I was going to do, and it was on sale. The retail price is 499 Australian dollars, but I got it at a bit of a discount. Now this jacket is a large. I'm six foot and about 90 kilos, and it was a little bit big for me initially. I say initially because now I've been wearing it for the year, it is actually about spot on for adventure bike riding where you're doing big compound movements. The jacket has a ton of features, especially for the price, so I'm actually just gonna read them. It's made from polyester, which you may know as textile. We've got armor on the back, shoulders and elbows, a waterproof liner, thermal liner, multiple air vents, a detachable throat collar, zips everywhere, a spot for a hydration pack, and look, I'm just gonna stop there because there are a ton of features. The best way to show you the features is well to actually show you, so let's do that. This is the jacket I bought, and I'm a bit annoyed it's in BMW colors, but it actually looks fantastic. I think it's a great looking jacket. So as I mentioned, there's a detachable throat collar. This is it here. It sits up here, clips in, and then uh, zips around the whole side and wraps around. I took this off straight away. I didn't like how it felt. Uh, I'm not sure what conditions you would actually use it in. Maybe if you're running in the Arctic or something in really cold conditions. For me, in a tropical climate, I don't need it, so I took it off straight away. Starting at the top, we've got a Velcro collar here. Everything here is Velcroed up. It's gonna be really noisy, excuse the noise. Uh, we have a really nice high quality zip. I have had no issues with the zip. I know for a lot of people that's a bit of a peeve. Uh, when you get a crappy zip. This one is fantastic. So we've got a ton of air vents and stuff on this. These are the main ones on the front. I'll show you how they work. So it clips into here for zip and you zip it up or unzip it and then it also Velcros in up here. and does the same on the bottom. Then you can also tuck it away into here and then that zips up. This is good for when you're in summer. Personally, I leave it like this and then just unzip it and tuck it if I need to, unless it's really hot. I will say that it is a bit fiddly to use um, when you're riding. So let's say you're moving and you're trying to unzip it. It's really, really hard. <laughs> I don't recommend it. It's better to stop and then uh, try to get the Velcros undone. The Velcros are really tough. And also getting to this zip down here, like it's all the way down in there. So that's a bit of a pain and really hard to get to. Good and practice could be a little bit better, I think, but the actual air vents work great. One feature that I haven't mentioned in the specs is you see here, this all kind of bends back and this is to stop water actually running into your jacket. So let's say you're running in the rain. This bit stops it here on this crease and then runs it all the way down the bottom. Pretty cool. As I mentioned at the start, this is large, which I felt was a little bit big for me. I have put on a little bit of weight, which does help, but um, what has mainly helped the most is everything is adjustable. You can see here, we've got adjustable straps with like a, a metal little carabiner thing here, which is fantastic. Also got them uh, on the forearms and also on the side. So that is absolutely fantastic. We've also got zips here. So if you need that little bit extra breathing room, we've got the zips there too. Some more kind of air vents we have is here. So on here, these zip up. You can go all the way up there. Personally, I go to there and then I go to there. So you got both, or if you just want to do one or the other, you can do one or the other. That's a really good feature. And you can also clip up this still if you want it to be open like that. We can run it all the way open. Personally, I have it like that for the protection. So we've got armor in the elbow forearm region here, the same on the shoulder. Well, there it is there and there's also one on the back, and that is removable. You can see it is all here, so if you want to take it out and wash the jacket, uh, you just undo the Velcro there. Uh, on the inside, we've got a phone holder. Personally, I find it just too small and I don't use it. Um, if you've got a small phone, yeah, it's great, but look at the size of that. For example, here's my phone. With the case on, it just fits, just fits. So here's it without the case, 
actually fits quite well. Uh, but if you do have a bigger phone than this, this is a standard Pixel 6. So if you've got an XL or like an iPhone Plus or whatever they're called, it's gonna really struggle to fit in there. But the cool thing is this has fantastic pockets and a heap of storage. These pockets on the front are fantastic. I usually put my wallet in here, but I've got my phone here for reference, so we'll put that in there. Fits absolutely fantastic, and I find it doesn't really get wet either. It's got like a waterproof liner, and you can see here this folds over, and it really seals up. It's good Velcro too, so I'm not worried about losing my wallet or anything like that. Very good to use. Uh, also, sometimes put tools in there that are easy to reach, like an Allen key to adjust my suspension and little things like that. One thing that annoys me on the front here is the Velcro collar. It's really short, like I don't have a massive neck, I just got a pretty standard, I suppose. And I find this always comes undone and I have to put it on like just the tiniest setting there. And if it's cold, it's really frustrating because you want to zip it up all the way there or Velcro it up, sorry. But I find that um, it's too short and always comes undone. So maybe on the next version, they need to make that a bit longer. Yes. This thing would help for that, but this thing I don't like using. <laughs> so the back of the jacket is definitely worth showing. Uh, it's got air vents here as well, which is zippable. They're really good to use. Kind of tough when you're riding as well, and it's really flexible to reach around the back. Uh, but it's great that they have them. And something fantastic is it has spot for a hydration pack, you know, like water. And uh, you put it right in here, the slides in there. It's got your tie points as well. And then also you can see it's actually got the spot for the water to come out uh, for your camelback or whatever you want to call it. So it slots out here, then goes around the front and there's a spot at the front as well for it to clip into. So you just run it into your mouth from there. So one thing I've noticed is if you don't have a backpack, you can use this as a backpack instead. So you won't need your camelback. You can just put your hydration pack in here and since it's got all these good pockets for storage, you can also put tools in it. And here's one of the big things is, at the back here, we've got this massive pocket that is designed specifically for tools, at least I believe it is. It's big, it's waterproof, you can fit a heap of stuff in there. What I've been putting in there is like um, zip ties and basic tools. Um, I personally take a backpack because I have all my GoPro gear and a little bit of camera gear. So, if I wasn't to have that uh, GoPro gear, this would suffice perfectly as a backpack. Put in some snacks in the back or something like that, some basic tools. You can put a, a wrap of tools in here as well, which would fit perfectly. Then you've got your water, you know, your phone and wallet at the front. Man, you're good to go. Just showing you the internal part of the jacket. You can see it's got like this mesh stuff, which is really good for washing. And below, it's also got a nice thick zip to uh, join in some pants or something like that if you want to zip them together. I also mentioned the jacket has a thermal liner. The thermal liner is very warm, so warm I haven't been using it at all. It's been too hot for me. The quilted liner connects with a clip at the top here. You can see it's got a button that just goes through the top and also on the sides it's got some zips here so it's really easy to install. Uh, it is better if you just leave it in, you know it's going to be cold, you leave it in for a period of time because it does take a little bit of time. The waterproof liner. I don't like it at all. Uh, it's kind of just this plastic sheet that goes in the middle of the jacket on the inside here. You have to clip it up through the arms and that. It's an absolute pain to take in and out. And one thing is, it is incredibly hot. Like even in mild conditions, it is really hot and sweaty and it doesn't allow you to breathe at all. So I've just basically discarded it. I don't like it. Uh, and one thing is, the outside is a little bit water resistant. Like if it's just showering, it'll be absolutely fine. When it rains, yeah, it's not waterproof at all. And here's the thing. The waterproof liner connects to the inside. So all the outside gets wet anyway. It's kind of, so what I prefer to do is just pack wet weather gear if I know it's going to rain or, or it might rain because the stock one that goes inside, it's an absolute pain and it just, it is so hot. I don't like it at all. I have to say I'm really impressed with the build quality of this. I've given this thing an absolute hiding so far and it looks pretty well new. I did wash it for this video. It gets really dirty with the kind of riding I've been doing, you know, falling over in the mud and stuff like that. But it comes up really good with the wash. It's also really easy to wash. You know, just put it in the tub, let it soak for a bit and give it a scrub with some mild detergent. It comes up really good. It takes about a day to dry.
Here's something really weird and awkward I've noticed with the jacket, and it's the only jacket that's ever done it, or piece of clothing at all. <laughs> if you go for a really good adventure ride in this, you come back smelling like a homeless person. I don't know what it is. I think it's something to do with the material it is made from, but it absolutely stinks. I'm not exaggerating. If you get it muddy and get sweaty, it smells like a dead set homeless person, like really bad. Uh, it's to a point where if I go for a ride, I actually won't wear this to and from work because I don't want to be stinky, you know? So you have to wash it really regularly or it, it stinks. I'm guessing it's something to do with the material. It could be me as well. I'd, I'd like to think I'm not that stinky, but yeah, definitely um, it mustn't be breathable or something like that. It, it really smells sometimes. So in conclusion, should you buy a Dry Rider Vortex Adventure 2 jacket? Yes, I think it is a very good jacket. The quality is there, it has a ton of features, and it's well priced. I'm very happy with mine, you know, it's lasting very well. I think it's gonna last for a good few years. And it comes with all the liners, even though I don't like the waterproof one, and it also doubles as a backpack if you want it to be. I've got some little issues with it, but overall, I'm very happy with this jacket. If you've got any questions about the Vortex Adventure jacket, just put them in the comments down below or send me a message on social media. If you haven't, hit that subscribe button and keep it on the back wheel. Catches.